Hello all. Um, it's been a while, hasn't it? And I've actually been trying to do this, um, the voiceover for this video for probably a few weeks now. And every time I try, it just doesn't come across well. It seems like some sort of a rant and that's not really intended. So um, basically, I just want to speak a little bit about a bit of a carding update um, and then talk a little bit about the very wet meat, which was interesting at Barossa, and then just touch on some of the frustrations um, without having a rant. <laughs> but um, that has kind of informed me as to a bit of a direction moving forward. So then I'll talk a little bit about perhaps where we're going. So first things first, um, I think we finished off talking about Monado uh, in the last video, which was a disaster, but um, we got past that. And actually a few weeks later, we went out and did a cart sport meet. Um, and I decided to enter in lightweight for a change. Um, we did okay, um, we were reasonably solid. We were not the quickest on track. So we got a second there, but um, yeah, I mean, it was quite good. The cart came home in one piece. So I was pretty happy with that. And then we had a few weeks break and then it was Festival State Cup, I think. Yeah, it was Festival State Cup at Barossa. And that was, um, we had, we had pace at different parts of that meet, but um, the race craft was a little bit down and we just got punted a little bit backwards. And, and I think when, although we had the pace at the end, we were not in the right place to really exploit it. And by then most people weren't making mistakes. So it wasn't one of our better meets, but the pace wasn't terrible. And uh, on a massive plus though, the meet was interesting and um, the committee put on some, um, well, quite innovative, uh, different things and, and full credit to Daniel Anderson for the uh, pyrotechnics um, being a professional in that area as he was that was really cool uh, and I think we all in, enjoyed that at the Brussels meet so after that meet though I thought I do need a pretty good break here so I took probably two months two months and I I didn't even sit in the car didn't practice didn't do anything um, I think I went maybe scuba diving did some other things i I totally switched off. And then we went out and did some practice at Bolivar and it was still in reverse direction um, after the meet that they had had there. And that was that was a bit of fun. I hadn't driven in reverse before ever. Uh, not now, not in the 90s. Uh, it, was, it was quite interesting. But following that, what was the next meet? Um, oh, yeah. And then we had the wet meet. So let's just focus a little bit on that because that was interesting. Um, it was at Barossa. Uh, last year we did we did we had good pace in the wet. We just missed out on the points with a couple of DNFs, and I've never seen weather that bad for the first half of the meet. Well, listen to that. The weather is terrible. Really heavy rain, so we just changed to wet tyres. I uh, really hope we've got enough tread because uh, we're going to need every bit of it today. Um, there's no sign of this weather breaking anytime soon, so I'm really curious how long they'll let us drive in it. But some of the class is already out practicing, so at this stage, it's you know, we're going ahead, but it's going to be very interesting. Right up until the sun went down, it was so wet, so waterlogged. Uh, people making a bit of a joke that when you came into the pits to the Ingrid, it was basically like a swimming pool when you just got soaked. So. Uh, but we, we did drive through it. I, I didn't think we would. Um, I thought they'd stop the meet, but uh, on, on, upwards and onwards. Unfortunately, we ended up going off in the warm-up, um, but we changed some setup around that to make the car a little bit more um, softer at the front. Uh, but yeah, so we found out the hard way. Unfortunately, lost half our practice. In the first race, we, we should have come second in that one. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, this is on me. Totally on me, uh, spun out on the sweeper, and um, yeah, I lost a heap of points. So um, that was the second mistake, but that was quite an expensive one with the points. Then uh, as time went on, uh, we had, um, we changed the gearing, we added another tooth. So I'm just changing my rear sprocket, I'm, I'm adding one more tooth, so going down in gear ratio, one more tooth to get a little bit more out of the corners. 
and particularly if it continues to rain, I think it's going to, I mean I could almost put two on, but I'm not going to do that in case it starts drying. And as you can see, 4SS, 4 stroke, run their sprockets to the inside, not outside. So in order to get them on, because of the axle, we've got split sprockets and we put them on, bolt them in place and then they act just the same way. But uh, essentially, that's all you have to do to change your gearing, change the front or change the rear and, and basically it's the rear we change at meets, not the front. The front is more of a headache. Um, we did okay, but uh, we had an, at least one other spin during the meet and it, again that cost us a load of points. But... whatever reason just by hanging in there when it came to the last couple of races um, we we had enough points in fact when we were in the final we started third so I thought oh, we got we got a chance of getting on the podium here uh, didn't really feel like we deserved it because of the two mistakes in the racing but I thought well let's see what happens so we did the final and the final actually I thought was a really good piece of driving because my tires were shot I mean there was there was no tread on the front right tire and I could feel it during the during the race getting less and less grip and I mean luckily by that time the rain had stopped but it was still a wet track and um, but we held on to a fourth place and then that ended up being a third place when um, Wesley uh, broke his chain and I thought oh that probably will be enough but unfortunately what I didn't seem to realize is the guy who won um, as a result, Wesley not finishing, he ended up coming third. So we, we missed out by a very small margin of getting on the podium. But again, I didn't feel like we really deserved it because of the two mistakes. But the, the last race, I think, given the lack of grip um, that I, I was dealing with, I thought was pretty solid. And yeah, there was a couple of people right on my ass, but um, um, I, I actually felt reasonably comfortable just, just being consistent. So that was that, and um, yeah, off we went, and um, and then that's when we sort of got the uh, the the next surprise, and that was that uh, the seals on the motor, that's the tags that you have on a 4SS motor, a Torini motor, um, in cleaning and driving and whatever else, one of them, it must have been wear and tear, one of them just came off. So I got in contact with Torini, and... Um, found out unfortunately there was no other way than sending the motor into state to um to get resealed <clears throat> and yeah it's frustrating um on one hand our category is treated like you know the poor cousin of the other ones you know not nearly as seriously you know it's more of a, an entry level category but then at the same time the i's get dotted and the t's get crossed when it comes to it you know, motors that they have to actually go into state, just not because there's anything wrong with the motor, just to get resealed. And that I found really frustrating because obviously that comes at a cost. Um, yeah, I, surely there should be a place in South Australia to have your motors resealed when that kind of thing happens. Because I know I'm not the first. So, yeah, I, at that point, I won't deny it. I was looking at what, where to from here. Do we continue? Do we do what we really wanted to do, which was go to one two fives, go to masters? Um, how much is that going to cost? And even just to think about it, I was looking for probably three, three and a half, four grand to modify the car, put on an X thirty motor second hand, but still a good one, and make that transition. And I thought about it, and I thought it's not going to happen. And this is where. This is when sometimes you start looking at other options. And I've been thinking about this for a while and I had been monitoring my former sport. Um, the first one I was any good at, which was uh, board sailing. I've been monitoring the One Design Racing in South Australia and thought, gee, there's a, there's a club that's really kicking off with competitors uh, and it looks really good. I've been watching it on, on YouTube uh, and they've got, you know, a fleet of at least 25 people are racing. Sometimes it's more people come from other clubs. I thought I'd like to really take part in that. And, and what's the, the cost to get a brand new package board and sale just to compete in this basic one design category? Um, 
three and a half grand. That's less than the price of installing a second-hand motor to go into Masters. And um, yeah, I thought about it, didn't think too long. Got out some of my old gear, checked I could still sail because I've got this inflammatory arthritic condition. Found out I was reasonably well under control. Out I went again, back to back. I thought, yeah, we're doing it. So I ordered the board. Board came in, and the last few weekends I've been out sailing. Um, and that's not to say I won't drive, but I'm basically going to focus, I think, in the near future on, on seeing how well we can do as, as a board sailor again, course racing. And um, we may do the occasional meet, but for the moment, that's going to be, we're going to pull right back. Uh, and it's on account of cost. Um, and again, not wanting to rant, but there are a few events that I feel that 4SS should be invited to compete in. Um, that they are not. And, um, you know, with the LT board sailing class, the windsurfer LT class, the beauty is you can compete, you know, if you're a club at a state level and a national level and the world championships for this class were actually held in Perth last year. And there are videos online of hundreds of boards. And I thought, well, I mean, there's no restrictions there at all. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I, I've got to give it a go. So that's going to be part of our direction. Um, and we'll, we might do a bit of carding on the side, but we're, we're going to pull right back and focus the money where it needs to go, which is this other rather um, exciting, but very, very consuming sport uh, of windsurfing. So anyway, that's uh, that's my little update. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too much of a rant. And um, I'll probably see you all out there again. I'm really hoping that I can be out for the uh, 50 lap final um, at Barossa at the next next club meet. But uh, that is depending on whether or not we get the, the engine back from interstate on this little holiday that it's been. So talk to you again soon.